record this. Recording, I think it's working. Okay, so I can now see myself on Zoom, um, but I think I'm going to chit chat with you guys on the Facebook so that I can see your comments. Is anyone here? Hello, hello, if you are not here, that's fine too. <sighs> okay, well, regardless, I am recording this and it's here for you. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a topic that I mentioned actually when I did the card readings last week. Um, and that was kind of doing a little bit more of a deep dive into um, what is like, um, what is it to actually um, in the real world, <laughs> what is it to actually be okay with not being okay? Um, I see a lot, like it's, it's very common to see things and people, you know, doing healing work around nervous system regulation and, um, you know, this whole nervous system reset stuff and like nervous system hacking and like all this stuff. Um, I'm just going to share with you my perspective, and this is not a perspective based on theory and it's not a perspective based on someone else's theory or ideas. Um, it's based on my own experience of living in my own body and in my own life. And then teaching a lot of these principles in a way that can be embodied to other people and then experiencing and seeing them live and practice these practices. So I just wanted to kind of, I wanted to outline that because I wanted to just be clear about where I'm coming from, that this is not exercises, this is not theory. Um, and what I mean by embodiment, it means that it's actually something that's happening in real time in your real life. It is something that does not negate your humanness. So this is not something that is dogmatic. This is not something, you know, that is, um, again, rooted in some kind of a theoretical um, approach. And I think sometimes um, it gets a little bit blurred and confusing in the, in the world of healing because um, there's a lot of dysregulation of the nervous system. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it. There is a lot of people, I'm sorry, I've got something in my eye. Um, there are a lot of people who are teaching this stuff without actually having, have done the work in their own bodies. And so they are teaching methodologies and theories but they're not necessarily teaching a living practice. And so what I really wanna share with you is a living practice because um, a couple of things, and I, I will actually get into some meaty material, I promise, <laughs> but this is kind of a big topic. Um, so living practice. <sighs> Part of talking a little bit more about this actually stemmed from um, my own process of going through this, but then also in the last couple of years, some of the teaching that I've done and some of the workshops I've done. And I remember there was a workshop I actually did uh, locally in Puerto Vallarta a couple of years ago at a yoga studio. Um, really, really small little workshop with two really lovely women who joined me, two brave souls. And um, one of the pieces of feedback and comments I got from one of the women, well, actually both, was I could tell that their nervous systems were pretty full. And not just full, but kind of like they weren't sure how to go about processing the experience that they were having. And I'm not saying, you know, it was bad or good or anything, but what I realized is that there are 
the work that I do and the teachings that I teach, I realized then that there are some pieces that are fundamental that in order to kind of really deep dive and explore in all of these places and spaces where we want to go. Um, and I see this in all aspects, right? I see this in the um, personal growth and development spaces. I see this in business development. I see where we were wanting to like push our boundaries and we're wanting to push and expand and expand and expand and expand. And we actually don't have the fundamental nervous system capacity to hold that expansion because most of us live in a space where we're kind of a bit frozen in one fixed place. And I wanted to kind of unwind what I mean by that in this particular video. I feel like this is gonna be a series. That's what I'm feeling um, because it's a lot to unpack. So the thing that I actually wanted to start off with today with is just talking about some of the myths that we have around um, our nervous system. I wanna talk about like some big um, pieces that I see some, and, and it's like, they're kind of like, it, it might not seem obvious, but they're very like, what's the word? They're really deeply rooted on a subconscious level to um, our societally, societal and cultural beliefs. So they're really deeply rooted and ingrained and imprinted really, really early on. And through that perspective and lens, we actually don't even realize that it's a perspective, right? So um, one myth that I kind of wanted to talk about is this idea around nervous system stability. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about range is that biologically, our nervous system is actually designed to move through a range. I just want that to kind of like sit and settle into your bones for a moment. That you are actually designed to experience a whole range. And that includes deep, deep, deep rest and restoration. all the way to let's call like extreme activation. And often one of the myths that we kind of get wrapped up in, I feel like is in activation. Um, and this is, is, this is found in teachings where people talk about they're stuck in fight or flight mode. Um, they're stuck in survival mode. Um, survival versus thriving, like all that kind of stuff is all wrapped up in this myth that there's like a preferred state that your nervous system has to live in for like optimal health and wellness. That's complete bullshit. I just want to just say it right there. The fact that your nervous system has one fixed place where it lives, where it's like optimal, completely contradicts its design. Its design is range, okay? And part of this myth, part of this idea, or, or it's actually kind of like a perfectionism, right? It's this perfectionism of like, if we're in this like place of like stability or neutrality, or, you know, even <laughs> I hate to use the word ease because that's the word that comes up, but, you know, and I've used that so much, but the fact that we think that everything has to kind of be in this ideal place to be healthy and happy and you know well and optimal and all the things and um, is actually contradictory to our well being. That might fuck up some things <laughs> in some people's like systems. So I just want you to kind of like feel your chair right now, feel your seat, feel the space that you're in, like just really 
let that land in your body that having being triggered is actually a normal nervous system response. And the reason why I want to talk about this, um, this myth is to bring some normality to something that is often demonized and pathologized. Here's the interesting things about a lot of the beliefs that we have around these like perfected states that we're trying to achieve through you know, health and healing and wellness. Often this whole, um, whole culture in health and healing and wellness is about trying to push for states of perfection that actually don't exist. And that in itself actually gets us on this hamster wheel of perpetually fixing something that does not need to be repaired, right? A really good example of this that I use all the time is in terms of our body. Um, in the Western medical model, often it's likened to being like a car. And even outside of the Western medical model, I say the Western medical model, but um, energy medicine, like even Reiki and energy work also goes off of this model. I know that might fuck some people up too, because here's the thing is even if you're like channeling energy into somebody, you're still trying to fix their, fix their chakras, right? Because their chakras are not working properly. You're not flowing properly. And this is just, that's just bullshit. <laughs> if you've been following me for a really long time, you know how I feel about that kind of stuff. Um, and also, again, I'm talking about this not from a place of, I'm not trying to poke the dragon. I'm not here to just challenge beliefs and trigger your nervous system. What I am trying to share, again, is from a real lived experience, right? And so here's, here's the rub. When we focus all of our energy into what I'm calling a myth, the myth of like the perfected state of their nervous system or perfective state of our body, if we're channeling our energy to like this place of equilibrium, when equilibrium is actually not our natural healthy state of being, we're actually working really, really hard and not getting anywhere. So it's frustrating. And at the same time, we're actually completely disconnecting ourselves from life force itself, our body, right? Because our body and our design is life force itself. So your nervous system is not wrong and it's not broken and it does not need fixing. However, what does happen is that we do kind of glom onto these preferred states of being in our nervous system. And that can actually get us stuck there. And that can happen for like tons of reasons. It can happen from trauma responses. It can happen through just learn programming. It can happen for lots and lots of different things. And in the end, here's the other thing. It actually really doesn't matter why it happened or how it happened. And I know, especially in the trauma world, that's kind of like a statement because um, it actually doesn't matter. If you've ever, a really good example of this is like, if you've ever hung out with animals Watch how they respond to something traumatic and watch their recovery process. It is instantaneous, right? Because they're not thinking about the right way to do it and the right way to be, right? Like my cats can literally go from complete state of bliss, utter relaxation, like they're like dead asleep napping on the couch they could go from zero to like 150 like that, and then back to zero like that. That's actually what our nervous system is also capable of doing. It's how we're built. And that is actually what I mean. But when I talk about nervous system range. 
So just think about that for a moment. You know, my kitty <laughs> can go from super, super chill, like belly exposed, like life is beautiful and I'm safe and everything is wonderful to a dog outside that is literally like life threatening, like um, jumps up, hair up, pissing, you know, full on um, fight, flight, freeze response. Well, for her, it's usually one of them is, is fight, flight, and the other one is just flight. <laughs> they, neither of them have a free response. But anyway, those are different, you know, ranges of our emergency responses, right? And then dog goes away or, you know, mom, mommy cat over here um, yells at the dog and it runs away. And then kitty goes right back to hanging on the couch. Or maybe she just goes back to something normal, like grooming herself or whatever. Hola, hola. And this is a totally normal response. And I just kind of want you to like absorb that for a moment because when is the last time that you were able to actually let your body go through that whole range? Most of us don't really have an embodied um, experience of that experience unless not that we can remember anyway, like there's of course the implicit memory of maybe when we we're babies before we had the explicit memory of remembering what happened. But, you know, as babies, as children, we often kind of go through that, but then because we have this like wonderful um, frontal, you know, um, prefrontal cortex that likes, you know, it's kind of the, it's sort of the newer, um, what, as I love this, like Alison Armstrong talks about this, of like we have like the brain is like the OG, like the original operating system. And then the prefrontal cortex is kind of like the aftermarket part that got added. And as much as I hate the mechanical model languaging, I love how she always talks about, you know, the aftermarket part isn't always designed to be super integrated with the like original plan of how it all works out, like the original map, right? So as humans, we get tripped up by our kind of aftermarket, newer, new age brain that's kind of like, oh, I don't like that. And oh, that's weird. And oh, you know, that's my boss yelling at me, like, you know, I should actually just chill out. You know, I, that's, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, I'm fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> right. So we kind of train ourselves to kind of shut down and disconnect from our animal being. And that animal being actually carries a lot of wisdom and it's primarily primarily and primarily the, the birthplace of our nervous system range. So part of the work that I do for myself and what I teach is how can we bring these two aspects of ourselves like in harmony? And you can call this like, you know, the mental aspect. I also think of it as like the spiritual aspect. It's basically bringing harmony to the subconscious and the conscious parts of ourselves. And by subconscious, I mean like the more primal animal parts of ourselves, right? So it's reconnecting with understanding that it's safe to have range, that it's safe to have permission. I've talked about this previously in my experiences of having panic attacks um, at a young age. And the interesting thing is because of this, like I think I had my first panic attack was like 15, 16. And I remember the process of being, your body thinks it's dying, right? So this is like the extreme part of the range. And because of that really smart, intelligent, you know, post-market prefrontal cortex, it's basically telling me that um, what is happening? this is not right. So this is not okay. Right. So that's the part that's telling us this is not okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. Where our body is having a response that is kind of completely um, primal. And this disconnect, this dissociation between those two parts kind of is where our nervous system kind of gets stuck. And often what can happen is 
we can actually block ourselves from moving through the full range and process of the expression. And we don't really let ourselves live out the whole expression, right? And the consequence of that, that's actually the consequence that we think is like, there's something wrong with our nervous system. It's not that there's something wrong with our nervous system, but we're just not letting it do what it wants to do. We're not really letting it fully express because there's a lot of fear and misunderstanding around that. So it's, this is not like something that you can study in a book. This is not something you can do through breath work and breathing practices. Those are wonderful ways to manage. Um, but if you have, you know, for example, I did a, a post on anxiety and, and I talked about this when I talked about how I don't manage anxiety. I actually let myself have the experience and I can do that because my nervous system knows its range and its range is really big. So I can let myself feel anxiety without feeling like I'm going to get lost in it. There's no fear. There is a certain trust that I have built with my own animal being, with my own primal being and my own intelligence that actually lets me work with that energy in a way that's helpful and in a way that's not scary. So it can be really liberating. And it's also the birthplace of some of the deeper healing works that I've done in my own body, in my own life. It's allowed um, for an immense amount of expansion, but part of that expansion, can, we cannot expand beyond our range, right? It's kind of like if you were gonna build a house, you can't expand upward or outward without having a foundation that can support that. Um, if you see me kind of looking off, I often get downloads. And so I'm just listening in for anything else that wants to be said um, in this particular transmission about this. Uh, there, I'm going to be talking about this a lot um, for a few different reasons. Um, one is that I've hinted this um, last year, I basically kind of deconstructed completely my business and my work. Um, and I've been kind of sitting with the compost. There's been a lot of composting. Um, and there has been a lot of just being patient and really fully being present to embodying what is emerging. And I have been called to share a couple different containers that I haven't really talked about, except for just right now is like the first time I'm really talking about this um, publicly anyway. I haven't talked, you know, I haven't released any information, but the reason why I'm talking about this and the reason why I'm feeling like this is really important to share is that I am really called to do and teach um, some really beautiful work sitting in the great mystery and leading from the space of great mystery. And I know that there are some of you who are practitioners who have already developed a sense of range and connection with this deep primal place. And I also know that a lot of you have not quite, you're still working in that space. Like it's not, a, that's not a place that's available to you. And that's kind of the place where I started realizing that a couple of years ago in that workshop where it was like, there is this yearning to come into this container and this energy and this exploration and really like deep diving into your own soul. But in order to go to the depths that you want to go, you first need to connect with your own range. So there's a couple different spaces that I'm going to be birthing, essentially. Um, if you're interested in either of them, 
one which is based uh, and are focused around practitioners and people that already have some degree of embodiment work and some basic foundation of range in your nervous system that is wilderness. We're going into the wilderness together. And also for those of you who want to explore those kinds of places and expand your own capacity, um, I'm gonna be opening up a space called Origins. And origins is actually really coming back to our own origins. It's actually really um, mapping our own body energetically, physiologically, biodynamically, and really actually understanding who we are um, at all levels, including the cellular level the nervous system level. So this is really about actually coming into your body, grounding into your body so that you can actually start to expand in the places of where you need range. We all need range, <laughs> we all do. But, you know, especially for people who are um, practitioners or doing, you know, if you're doing, for example, intuitive development work, expanding your range is essential. For me, I cannot do the work that I do, not just in teaching, but like even physically, like the body work and the energy work. A lot of people ask me in, for example, when I do cranial cycle therapy sessions, like, you know, what's like my capacity? Like, how do I get tired after doing a bunch of sessions? Like if I do two or three sessions in a row, like, am I going to feel tired? And the answer is no. <laughs> um, and it's no, because I'm not actually working with my own energy. I know that sounds weird. It's not like, you know, when we actually tap into this range, we unlock access to life force energy, all life force energy, right? By, by working with your own range, with your, working with your own life force, you are actually working with all of the life force energy, right? It's like trying to move something just you as an individual person versus trying to move something and letting the ocean do it for you, right? You just connect to that resonance, which we all are, right? I don't have to channel that oceanic energy to my client because my client already is the oceanic energy. I just have to hang it with my own connection and my own embodiment of it. We recognize, just like for example, when we're around people with really clear boundaries, we recognize our own boundaries and our own lack of boundaries, right? We all reflect that. The more range we have in our nervous system, the more we're allowed to receive that reflection as neutral information rather than being totally thrown, triggered by it or being like victimized by it, right? Hmm. I think that's all I wanna talk about for now. Um, I will record this. I think I'm probably going to upload this to YouTube, why not? Um, let's see what else. Yeah. If you have questions, comments, curiosities, let me know in the comments below. If you want to play in this space of expanding range, um, let me know my inbox is open and here for you. Um, a little bit more about these containers. Um, I'm going to be running them really differently. Um, there is space to be in both at the same time. 
there is space to do one and not the other. There's going to be like a, a time commitment, like probably around three months, but it is going to be an open space. So if this is something you're like really resonating right now, send me an inbox. If this is something that you're curious about, you can just hold it in your being for now and know that um, there isn't like a time limitation. So this is gonna be really different in terms of the start. Um, I'm going to be rolling out the start when I have a certain amount, uh, basically a certain number of um, adventurers who commit, um, we're gonna roll with ahead with it. So there's no like, I'm not announcing um, a particular start date. We will start when the container is ripe. And it's a collaborative effort. It's, it's we're working and growing together. I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know how to portray my excitement. I'm really, really excited. Um, for the first time, I kind of feel like I can just do whatever the fuck I want. And I'm really excited to share that with you. So if, uh, if working from an entirely different paradigm is something that feels curious to you, if working from a place where you don't have to perfect or fix yourself, feels like a really juicy thing right now for you, this might be the thing. Um, again, my inbox is open. And if you want to know a little bit more too, that's actually the other thing. Let me know in the comments. If you have a particular question, I am going to talk about and flesh this whole topic out um, around being, you know, okay with not being okay. There's more to say about this, so I, I will do another video. But if there is, if there's something particular that you want me to address, like let me know in the comments so that I can address that and speak to that, because um, I feel like there might be a couple of, of themes or places that require a bit of clarity. So let me know. I'm happy to clarify for you. Anyway, other than that, happy Tuesday, my wonderful dear ones. We will see you soon. Mwah!